Hi everyone. So I feel like I'm a lot more put together uh, and prepared today than I was yesterday and so hopefully uh, this is a better experience too overall. So um, instead of um, trying to start, start the camera or do some running around. I'm trying to do some switching back with the camera mode and see if that works too. Hello, Shelly. Thanks for joining in. So yeah, um, yesterday was just kind of like a disaster, but yet the card still turned out. So that is success. And um, hi, Julie. Hi, Barb. And so I thought, you know what? I just need to settle down, think things over, and um, see what I can do better or different today. And I already like instantly came up with things and I thought, okay, this is gonna work. So um, I'm putting myself in a different angle to start today and hoping that the sunlight, even though I'm thankful for the sunlight big time, um, that doesn't interrupt um, anything just to start out with. But hi Joyce, thanks for joining in. So um, I had to to do a quick check in the mirror because I just made some, um, I want to make sure that my iPad's going to, um, I uh, made some homemade banana cake with peanut butter cream cheese frosting. It's still a little bit warm and it's one of those really heavy cakes. The banana makes it really heavy. And so I was licking out to the bowl of the frosting that is mostly cream cheese and peanut butter with a little bit of corn syrup mixed in. And so I think that might be my afternoon treat we usually this time of year eat supper a little bit later so I need that snack this afternoon right <laughs> so um, so I know a lot a lot of times you guys want to know like what is she baking for stamp camp and since this is my May virtual stamp camp I thought it was important that I need to keep up the bank baking and not just say it I, I need the appearances too so I wish I could help serve up some of that yummy stuff to you guys too. It doesn't work probably so well to send that in the mail with the cards either. But um, today, um, before I flip things over, just want to let you know that today's day three already of the 10 virtual stamp camp cards that I'm making for the month of May. So to get the stamp cards you can either place an order of $75 and I get the cards to you all 10 of them or um, if you uh, just want the cards and don't need anything right now then you can always just um, pay $22 and contact me and say hey put me on your list to get the cards for this month and I can do that too so so far my list is growing again so you guys are keeping me busy and I really appreciate that so um Yesterday I kind of said, hey, let's do something with that stamp set best catch. So now is the part where I'm not going to stress out. I'm going to get the camera flipped um, for the angle for you guys to see it best like you were able to yesterday. And hopefully everything will work out great. So let me just um, kind of shrink this down a little bit. Twist, twist. Hopefully nobody gets seasick. And there we go. I'm going to see if I can get it one more notch. Maybe not. Okay. So I think it's gonna sit right there at that angle. So hopefully you can still see it well that way too. And I'm gonna put my iPad there so that you can see what I'm doing. But as always, I appreciate your comments. Yesterday you guys had tons of comments and that really helped me to know that, um, that you were able to see things well. Um, and it also encouraged me to not go hide in my room and cry after losing things, um, having papers that didn't turn out. Hello, Barb from Canada, how are you today? So um, so yeah, so today I feel like it is a brand new day. Yesterday was a rainy day. If you guys know me at all, I kind of thrive on sunshine. So when today um, started, I thought I know it's already gonna be a better day just because of that. So um, today, here is the card. So want to show here we go this is the card that we're doing here um, and so this is where it's kind of fun to do this angle just because you can see um, the sentiment without it being backwards and then when I go to show you which stamp sets I'm using they are not backwards either so hi Sherry thanks for joining in so best catch um, it is like the best deal right now. Oh, I can see I'm getting my sunshine from my window in there too. But best catch is on sale, literally $12 for the stamp set. I think that's like um, a 60% savings on their, um, on the stamp set. So that's pretty exciting. And then I'm using Crackle again. Um, Crackle is retiring as well as best catch. So I wanna let you guys know that I use Crackle um, in my April stamp camp 
And since I'm using uh, retiring stamp sets this month, I thought let's go ahead and use Best Catch, or I mean Crackle again with my Best Catch. So um, as I uh, go ahead with the card making, I will point out any other products that are retiring as well. Um, Best Catch can be found in the annual catalog, so that's the one with the blue cover here. I just get my spiral bound because they lay so much better. And that is on page 150. So yesterday I kind of gave you a sneak peek because I used the stamp set uh, Lily Pad Lake. And I said, hey, let's use this one today. So it's on page 150 in the annual catalog. And then we're gonna go right to the dies again, which um, catch of the day, um, that's on page 191. And those have some good dies there too, if you can see the images. I even like the two little fishies too that you can, well, maybe I need to get it closer. There we go. There we go. <laughs> so I'll adjust to this, but I can already see just as I'm doing it. And yesterday, horrifically um, watching the replay, um, I was able to see how much clearer that this angle looked. And I was excited about that for you guys. Just as long as I'm doing it, I want it to be a clearer shot for you guys too. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for joining in. So um, to get started with my card here, I'll show you again. Um, I'm going to start with that crackle background and it's just a really easy thing to do. So um, for my big background stamps, this is a cling stamp, so it's sticky. So what I'm going to do or show you is because it's sticky, I put that sticky mounting on there, it stays right in the case. So I'm gonna tap it back down there and make sure I don't have any ink on my fingers because I didn't wash it after doing my sample. So then it stays right in the case and I don't have to worry about it going anywhere. And then I'm just gonna take some Sahara sand ink, slide that into place, and I'm just going to lightly tap that, not pressing at all, just lightly tapping. And then I'm going to take my first layer here, which is gonna be the top layer. And then I have an extra acrylic block. And I love doing this, just a quick swipe through. Not a lot of heavy pressure there again. And what that does is it doesn't um, make me have to press this piece in there or get any, whoops, <laughs> get any extra ink on my fingers. So the block just kind of helps with that and keeps your um, fingers a lot, um, a lot cleaner. Thanks, Barb. Hi, Donna. Thanks for joining in. And then sometimes I just wash this whole thing right in my sink and let it air dry and then just um, close it to have it ready to go for the next time. So my card bases are four and a quarter by five and a half. And then this is Sahara sand. And then my next layer is mossy meadow. And that is four inches by five and a quarter. So just down stepping at a quarter inch. And then the next layer is 3.75 by five in Sahara sand again. I was going to do a card, put it this way, where the whole base was um, mossy meadow and then just this on the top. But then I thought when you open it, you're going to need something like the mossy meadow in the inside again for people to have their greetings and sentiments. And so I thought, well, if I'm having to add that extra, I'd actually rather revamp the card and have the extra layers on the top. Um, and I think it just adds and helps frames that frame that card. And Barb, yeah, I was so excited too to um, put together a masculine card. I have, I was joking, I have a lot of men in my life. Um, and so it's um, my three sons, my husband, I have four brothers. They love to hunt and fish. So a card like this is perfect, um, as well as Father's Day is coming up too. So it's always good to have those things. And if you guys haven't heard, our, our world is going to be rocked to the end of this month because little Princess Harder is making her entr entrance at the end of this month. So we'll have our first girl um, to dote on and spoil rotten. So that'll be fun too. Um, so next what I'm going to do is take the fish and I love all the detail on the fish here. So um, there's not a lot that you have to do when you have stamps that have all of that um, kind of texture look to it and such, what makes it really fun. So I'm just taking some pieces here of the shimmer cardstock. 
shimmery white, excuse me, shimmery white. And I'm just going to stamp my fish out, so that's memento ink. So that way I can add any kind of um, ink to color in and it won't bleed or anything. And that's all I need to do for the stamping. So um, for so far anyway, before I run it through the big shot. So then I'll pull the big shot over and I also like to show you kind of what else um, I feel like a waitress. Here's the catch of the day. So the catch of the day thinlets come with some really neat images. You have this guy that's fly fishing, the large and small um, fishes here, and the hat, and the bait, and a couple of those, and then the nice fishing basket too. So those are the ones I'm not using, and then what I'm using is the fish dye, as well as some cattails. And so let me grab my fish here and line that up. And I wanna make sure that he doesn't jump or anything. I'm gonna see if this guy cooperates, then I'll put this one on at the same time. Just, I'm going to run through two cattails and one fish. So as long as I can get one of the cattails through, the Big Shot is nice. I mean, we are replacing it. It has rubber feet, but when I put it on my paper here to stamp on, then um, it doesn't always want to be rubberized to that paper. It kind of moves around a little bit. Hello, Sue. Hi, Julie. Thanks for joining in. Okay, so we have cattail dye there. It looks pretty plain white on the shimmery white. And then the fish, and this is the most exciting part about the fish. Doesn't take me, uh, uh, doesn't take too much to get little things like this to excite me. So when you cut it, it um, with the big shot, then this cuts out the extra little fin to make it look popped up like that, which is really fun too. Okay, and then what I need is just, I'm gonna throw these scraps over to this side. I just need one more of the cattails. So today's technique, I feel like I've been kind of showing you guys this quite a bit, <clears throat> excuse me, quite a bit, but, um, oh, I have to see, okay, price was, uh, Sherry's telling me that's awesome news to me, can't wait to tell T. Now I can't remember what I said. <laughs> so, oh, that she's having a girl. Yes, yes. So, yeah, having a girl in our household is a pretty big deal. It's like I was thinking Sherry was super excited about the card I was making because um, she's married to one of my brothers. That's the hunting and fishing nut. So <laughs> they're excited about the girl. Great. So here's my second um, cattail. And you can see um, the cattails at the top are right with the greenery, all one thing. But when I color it, and I'm going to show you some watercolor, you'll see how it's gonna look like it's almost two separate things too. So let me just set that aside. And I think I'm going to start, yeah, I'm gonna start with the cattails. And so I have my mossy metal ink pad here. Oops, I actually wanna keep this open, as well as my soft suede ink pad. I'm gonna keep both of those open. Sometimes it's like, even though I just made the card, I was thinking, now how did I have this lined up in my craft room. So I'm just gonna put a couple dots or drops of the soft suede reinker, and then just a dot to make sure that I've got a good strong um, dot of the reinker of mossy metal as well. So um, I love the aqua painter for this technique. And then just to make sure that I'm starting with a fresh, clean color here, I just give it a good squeeze and then just um, Kind of dry it out on my paper like so and I'm going to take some of that fresh darker ink kind of just smear it off to the side sometimes I'll even go off to the side to go oh that's not too dark and then I'm just going to smear it all over my cattail here like so I'm gonna try and get my fingers out of the way and so I'm just painting this basically on so I don't really take too much time to make sure that the details are really like 100%. And I wanna show you something too that's normal for my thing. So when I kinda of do a hurry job, you can see there's a blop, if that's a word, of darker green there just because of how I picked it up and maybe I'm missing a spot there. So sometimes I don't see the missed spots until I pick it up off my paper. 
So being this is that shimmer white, it holds water really, really well. So I'm gonna give that just you know a few seconds to dry. If you guys have questions, I can see your comments on the screen. So feel free to chime in and give me some thoughts or um, if you have questions, but maybe you're just like, oh, I don't like to watercolor, but I'm, I'm watching. Anyway, there are so many people that are really afraid of watercoloring. And I think it, I, it used to look like terrifying because it just looked like a thing like, okay, I'm used to coloring in the lines and doing my thing. And so something that you can just be messy, I just thought really, and it turns out okay, that's all right. So you can see here again on this one, I have a really dark area there and I kind of did that on purpose just so you could see the different shades and variations. So on this one, um, because there are cattails on, actually both of them, I'm going to go more towards the dark and I'm just going to keep adding a little bit of a darker look to that. And I'm going to try and make it not look too smooth because I'm layering these and I feel like if the color isn't 100% smooth, it's going to give it kind of a nice natural look like it would in nature. You don't walk up to cattails in nature and have them look completely the same color. Otherwise, it would kind of look like a prop. And as I layer these, then that'll add some dimension too. Now for the cattails, they have been left white so far. And this is where I kind of flip my mediums and I go from the aqua painter over to the soft suede and just gonna kind of make sure it's not too dark because I can always go over top with this type of um, watercolor paper. So I'm just gonna tap that with my aqua paint or with my blender pen. And I'm gonna just put that color right on the tip here. So that's kind of a fun, there's the camera, kind of a fun look. Now it's really starting to take shape and look like a cattail, which is fun. And so then I'm going to do the same thing with my second set. So today's card actually I found on Pinterest. Um, I was just like, I've seen so many cute cards with this. And a lot of times you guys do see my original ideas and a lot of times you ask like, where did you come up with that idea? Today's idea is from Marcy Denning on um, Pinterest and I just, I liked it. I just kind of moved around a few of her pieces and um, where she put things on the card. And she had three cattails and I kind of just went, you know what, I'm gonna do um, two and that's gonna be good enough. So now I'm going to color the fish and I'm going to start with the mossy meadow and I'm going back to my aqua painter and I'm just going to color him in kind of lightly all around there like so just kind of a light color wash and then um, with the deeper color I'm just going to tap into the deeper and color darker on that fin that pops up and sometimes that wants to just color out and get lighter right away, but that's okay because we can add more. That's why I usually use shimmery white instead of the whisper white when I'm doing things like that because it doesn't um, over, um, I don't know, hydrate the paper and make it so it gets peely. I feel like I have a little bit more control with that. So I'm just going to kind of um, dab that off and then I'm going to switch to the soft suede here. And then I'm just going to go over the fish and I kind of am trying to grab some of that green next to it so it doesn't look like a fine line of exactly green next to exactly the suede color. I'm going to just tip that in like so and then there you can see where I'm pulling it down over the green just to have it um, kind of shade in there so even though I'm using just two colors. This is going to actually look like I've got a lot more going on by kind of going over top of that. I'm just going to go over and make that a little darker too. So this is how mine turned out this, the first time. Hi Kathy, hi Sandy, hi Nancy. Thanks for joining in. So this is how my first fish turned out. And then what I didn't like is I felt like there was kind of this exaggerated white line around there and I didn't like that. So I went back with my aqua painter and you could actually use a sponge if you wanted to, but I thought, you know what, 
I was sitting there so peacefully at my desk and who wants to get up and get a sponge? And this is right here. And I thought too, then I could kind of know that um, I'm putting the right amount and it's gonna kind of look like it melds together this way too. So I'm just kind of making that look a little antique -y around the edges so there's not that white outside edge. I'm just gonna add a little water there like so. Hello, Pam, how are you today? Just gonna fill in that little bit there too. Okay, so now he looks like he's been in water, not hand cut. So I want him to look a little murky and such. So I think the only thing that I have left to stamp is my sentiment. And I chose It's Your Day. There again, we have Father's Day coming up next month. Um, but yet some people don't have fathers. Some people, like I said, like to send cards to their son. So I stamped out It's Your Day, and this could be a birthday card or anything like that. So It's Your Day, very versatile. This is the one inch circle punch. Um, I looked in the new catalog and there are a lot of circle punches going. I know the circle framelits are staying in for the big shots, that'll help. So that was one inch and this is one and a quarter inch. So there again, sticking with the quarter inch for layering. And then with my adhesive here, oops, I'm just going to put those things together. And I'm going to start assembling my card. So I have this, like so. Oops, <laughs> let's put that on the mossy metal. So Sahara sand on mossy metal. And then I'm just going to tape this down onto the card like so and then we have that kind of base there and then to put these little um, patches on I'm just going to take my adhesive again and I kind of try and have some of it look like it's going to the edge so it's over the first layer so it kind of gives it a little bit of dimension there. I thought about popping them up, but since I'm putting kind of one on top of the other, I just want to lay them kind of side by side and then have the fish popped up to be kind of the focal point that way. So I'm going to kind of make sure that that fin is lifted up like so. I'm going to put about three dimensionals, and this is where I kind of had to be careful because if you put a dimensional underneath there, you can see it. So um, I just kind of tried to flip up the fin that does die cut with um, the big shot when you're running it through, but you really can't put a big shot or a big shot, a dimensional or it'll show up. So I'm just gonna kind of put this off to the side like so. And then with a couple dimensionals, I'm going to pop up my sentiment as well. And today for my extra little accessory that I'm going to add onto the card, cause like this could, this could really be okay. I'd be okay with that. But I have these adhesive back sequins. And so let's see, where's my take your pick tool? I love this take your pick tool. Like when I have rhinestones and gems, I use my putty end to um, just kind of take those off. But with the adhesive back sequins, I just take the super sharp pointy end and just kind of poke through the center and I'll grab three of these because it's important to have an odd number. And you know, you think sequins on a guy's card, but actually these almost just um, kind of blend in with the card so much that you hardly see they're there. They're about that same color. Again, they're the adhesive back sequins in the back of the catalog with the accessories, but um, they're um, so nice because they are adhesive back. They are retiring. So I checked to see before I came online to see if they're on sale or not. They're still regular price, but I love them. You get a variety of colors and such too. So I end up using a lot of those. So let's see if I can get switched back to me without making you guys motion sick. Okay, let's see here. Yay! Okay, so today went so much better. Um, I even had my youngest son, um, you know, kids are on their phones all the time, so I asked him yesterday, do you think if I do this with my camera, do that with my camera? He's like, yeah, I think it'll work. So, um, so for his reward, the cake again. So,
banana cake peanut butter frosting with some cream cheese and so he'll be excited to come in and have that so it's always funny too that when I do my lives if I incorporate the food into my presentation then um, one of them if they're walking by and this cake or cookies or whatever I've made is sitting close to the door and not in the kitchen they'll be like where's that going <laughs> so um, now they're getting used to that too so um, my other big news is that between yesterday and um, um, this time I was able to um, upload all of my videos that I've done live and I put them on YouTube. Hi Paula, thanks for joining in. So if you want to check out YouTube, um, it's as easy as going to YouTube and going in the search bar and putting in Bell Harder. And I had my son check it out because I've been on there a lot uploading and I didn't want to um, kind of skew the effort of looking for me when I've been on there the whole time. It's, it knows it's me. So I had my son check it out. He's like, Mom, you're the first thing that popped up. So search for Bell Harder and you will see um, the 19 live videos that I did last month as well as the two that I've already done this month. So um, I hope now that I've got that routine down that I can continue to post those two because there's so many that don't don't have Facebook so if you have a friend that you've been um, talking about these live videos and know that they don't have Facebook um, then hopefully they can um, watch that way too and um, get some inspiration so like I said I'm, I'm doing this as a virtual stamp camp but also just to give you guys some inspiration now we're going on quite a few weeks of playing it safe, sheltering at home, and keeping everyone um, safe like they should be. So um, hopefully I'm adding a little bit of inspiration into your day. And if you have some of these things that I'm using, um, it would be great if you could uh, share them and go, hey, look what I made today with what you use today. So that's pretty great as well. But if you have any questions, um, please let me know. Otherwise, happy Wednesday and see you tomorrow afternoon.